In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were locked in the room where the disciples were, and they were there for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Shalom, peace be with you. In St. John's account of an early resurrection appearance, the disciples were literally huddled together in a locked room, trembling with fear, I suspect, waiting for the grisly fate that befell Jesus to come and to do them in with an equal, if not more terrible, form of violence. And not only did fear color the emotional climate in that upper room behind the locked door, I suspect there was also a boatload of guilt and a mountain of shame. Quite literally, the 11 must have been perishing in their sin as they recalled the events of Friday and all the recriminations and blamings and desolations of the next two days. As together they recalled with what would feel like a nauseating kind of self-disgust, how each of them had deserted and abandoned their friend and their brother, Jesus. How they had left him on Calvary to die in the company of common criminals. How at the end they had fled to the four winds to save their own pathetic skins. Well, into this huddle of fear, grief, guilt, and shame, comes what must have been an enormously confusing, yet awesome promise of a second chance, a third chance, maybe a fourth chance, a new start. The resurrected Jesus walks smack dab into this middle of their group and offers them the word of peace. Peace be with you. Surely the last thing on earth that any woman would ever expect to hear or to see are to face, are to feel again. Oh my God, they must have thought he's going to throw the book out of us. Who is he? What's he doing here? How utterly contemptible human beings can be. And yet, wonder of wonders, here stands the risen Christ with the word shalom on his lips. That's a huge word. He couldn't have chosen a more perfect greeting, an expansive expression, that encompasses all kinds of good notions like absolution, reprieve, exculpation, forgiveness, acquittal, pardon, and the remission of all sins, the big one, the middle-sized ones, the little ones, the mortal, the venial, and the trivial. The good news of Easter is especially marked for those like the 11 who least deserve to hear it and would never, ever expect experience of the kind they experienced. The presence and promise of the risen Christ is especially targeted to those who think they know beyond a shadow of doubt that they haven't so much as a hoot of a chance. I don't want to let this first Sunday after Easter day traditionally known as Low Sunday, to get past us without telling an Easter story that has lodged itself on the frontal lobes of my brain. Back in the 1970s, I was serving in a city church way down south in a great diocese. I was so happy serving in the city. My wife having a job, all was copacetic. Oh, I had been there for two years and the bishop called And back in those days, when the bishop called, you go to the bishop's office, and the bishop said, I want you to move. I want you to go to this town of 10,000. They're in a conflicted mess, and you're the one to go. I said, oh, no, I'm a city boy. Let me stay here. He said, I insist you go, and I went. And oh, was it crazy. I had been rector all of 10 months in this new place, when of all people on the face of the earth, Geraldo Rivera appeared. And a cavalcade of thrill-seeking journalists descending upon this little mountain town nine miles from Dog Patch, little town of 9,000 inhabitants. 
Well, the pastor of a little church nearby, not one of us, but the pastor of a small church way up on the mountain in the woods, banking on Jesus' word that the disciples would do even greater things than the Lord, he announced that he would raise a man from the dead. Just did God have raised Jesus. And oh, did that inflammatory word spread like wildfire, presumably even to New York City where it rattled Geraldo's soul to get on the train and come down. The deceased was an elderly gentleman who for many years was a deacon in this little community called Deer, D-E-E-R. He had expired three weeks previous. When the story broke, he was on ice in a fellow churchgoer's Kelvinator deep freeze. And without a benefit of any embalming, I might add. And according to his pastor, the deacon would be emerging from his stone cold tomb when the preacher would collect some other words from St. John's Gospel and say, Lazarus, come out. Now this was big news in that city of 9,000. Inhabitants there, one 80th of the inhabitants, described themselves as Episcopalians, and I was the only Anglican divine for at least an 80-mile radius. None of my church folk were there, but I was. When the day of resurrection came, I was front and center with everybody else as we waited for Lazarus to pop the door of the Kelvinator deep freeze. (laughs) Most of the people I knew were more interested in seeing Geraldo than they were in witnessing spiritual flim flam. But whatever, there we were, standing on the tiptoe of expectation. So when the pastor of the dear church arrived and began walking toward the back porch of the house where the freezer was located, the crowd was hushed, all eyes and all ears. Well, I, I was really concerned. For that frozen old dead man to come out, I knew I would have to call the bishop immediately (laughs) and to tell him we really had a serious problem on our hands. It was one, I would say, that's requiring Episcopal attention and oversight and probably a pastoral letter, and why not an official visitation? Now, I had had four years of theological education at the Episcopal Theological School in Cambridge, Massachusetts. That's a long, long way from where I was. Never did once I have a course or a session on the defrosting of corpses. But the day came. The day came and the moment of truth dawned upon us when the pastor literally bellowed, Lazarus, come out. Well, nothing happened. A few moments later, he did it again louder. Lazarus, come out. Well, not getting a response, he tried much louder. Lazarus, come out. Well, after a while, nothing of moment happened except for Geraldo prattling up a storm about Christianity, Southern Mountain style. Now, you can look. It's probably on YouTube. You can find him preaching a sermon. The spiritual side so lost momentum quickly, and the crowd dispersed and our own town returned to business as usual for three more weeks, and then it happened again. Wouldn't you know, just a month later, in an incident completely unrelated, President Jimmy Carter's evangelist sister, Ruth Carter Stapleton, do anybody remember her? I do. She prophesied that 10,000 legions of angels were poised and ready to descend upon, of all places, this town where we were living. Oh my God, once again, I I would have to call the bishop and say there's been a cosmic invasion (laughs) to tell him we had a problem on our hands and we needed his pastoral visitation ASAP. My seminary education was proving to be worthless when it came to dealing with Christianity in the raw. Resurrection has nothing to do with defrosting a corpse. Resurrection has very little to do with corpses, for that matter. It has everything to do with life, life in the fast lane, the high quality of life God makes abundantly available to those who stay close to him or her. 
to those who wander far astray, and to those who even go so far as to betray, as did the disciples. Resurrection encompasses not only the continuation of life that commences at our physical demise and takes us into that completely mysterious dimension we call eternity, but it's also a real quickening, it's an energizing of life that you and I are given right here and right now if we should take it. Most especially at those times in the course of life when we, you and I, are weighed down with guilt, are terrorized with fear, are overcome with shame, are decimated by loss and the outpouring of grief it brings. As a disciple of Jesus Christ, the pastor of the little church in the community of Deer knew the scriptural promise that he could perform even greater works than did our Lord. But his efforts were misguided. He got way off track. Rather than phrasing his frozen deacon from the deep freeze, perhaps he should have been offering a word of shalom or taking that in himself. And the promise that lies behind that great word, that is, praying for the repose of the man's soul or embracing the man's wife and children, or preaching Christ crucified and risen to his congregation, or allowing himself to weep as did Jesus at the loss of a good and faithful friend whose name was Lazarus. That would have been more than enough to ensure that particular quality of life we call resurrection life. The risen life came and stood among the disciples and said to them in dire straits, as they perished in their sin, peace be with you. And he said it three times, just in case they didn't get it the first. Shalom, you and I that were buried with Christ in his death and raised with Christ from the dead. I take that to mean that God has given us an enormous gift of resurrection power, power to walk right smack dab into the very center of whatever guilt or fear our shame, our distress, our confusion, or God only knows what is weighing us down, or on anyone else that we care about for that matter. Whatever fear there is of future events appearing real, F-E-A-R, whatever shame there is which whispers to us that we are disqualified from connecting with God, with others, or even with the innermost parts of ourselves. Whatever grief there is we're experiencing over the many losses that come with living. Resurrection is not limited to Jesus. It's ours as well with this gift of shalom, the peace of God that passes all understanding, the love given from above when we least expect it, this forgiveness granted even though it be undeserved. We do not deal with spiritual flim-flam. There is no need for us to stage any kind of spiritual sideshow to attract a crowd. Geraldo would find St. James Cathedral a very boring place. But this happens to be the place where the good news of Jesus' resurrection is preached and celebrated, and the even better news that you and I have also been raised and given more than a fair share in his glorious victory. Shalom, peace be with you. So risen, Lord, as you fill the hearts of your disciples with joy, so fill us this day as we walk into, as you walk into our midst and hear your word of that glorious peace. And now unto God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be ascribed as is most justly due all might, dominion, majesty, power, and glory in the name of the risen Christ. Amen.